You're listening to the God, God Life, Life Culture, Culture Podcast, Podcast, where faith and what's trending collide. Welcome, welcome back to the latest episode of the God Life Culture Podcast. This is Eddie. What's up, everyone? This is Miguel, and we are so excited that you are tuned in for another episode of the God Life Culture Podcast. We want you right now to take a moment to hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed to our podcast. To all of you listening to us on Apple, Spotify, or Anchor, we want to say thank you so much for tuning in week after week. And for those of you who are watching us on YouTube, we want to say thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, And we want you to take a moment right now to hit the like button, share, comment, and just be a part of what we are doing here at the God Life Culture Podcast. Eddie, how are you feeling today? Good. Very good, actually. You know, today's one of those days where um, you kind of like play hooky from work. You're like, you know what? It's a nice day. Let's take a half day. Let's go out. Let's like enjoy uh, the weather because it was actually uh, surprisingly a nice weather today uh, for beginning of march um so we went and tried something for the first time for me for my wife she's had it a bunch of times uh but for me it was my first time trying ramen okay um, which i'm you know i like to try new foods here and there okay you know i've had thai food i've had moroccan food obviously you know as a latino you have all the different types of latino foods that comes with that as well right uh greek american but for ramen and for being someone who watches like anime and stuff like that you know they a lot of that uh, type of food like ramen and stuff like that comes up as well um, in the shows. I had never had, I never tried it before, and it was salaming. Okay, Actually, very good. Um, very. Um, I didn't. I didn't think it was as soupy as wet. <laughs> <laughs> It was like this big bowl, and I was like, "Oh, that's a lot of broth." Um, <laughs> uh, but it was great. It was really good, and you know, I'm o- I've always been the type of person who, and I think it has a lot a lot to do with my upbringing. Okay, um, since you grow up in a very like traditional Latino household, that's all you eat: Latino food, twenty four, you know, all the time, right, whatever. Right. You try to like, there's no we're going to McDonald's type of a thing. It's like no, there's leftover rice and beans from three days ago. That's what you're gonna right, eat type right. of thing. <laughs> um, so as an adult, I always thought. I've always been adventurous when it came to eating um, different types of food. Now, ask me if I like broccoli and celery and stuff like that. No, I do not. <laughs> uh, but when it comes to like different flavors and different types of food, it's always been something that I've always been intrigued and interested in trying. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think when was the last time you tried like a new food or something like that? Listen, I mean, I think um, every time we go to some type of restaurant or anything like that, my wife yeah. always tries to get me to try um, some type of seafood or fish yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. So I can't really remember the last time, but I, you know, the last, I, you know, a few times you've gone somewhere, it's always been like some type of fish or some type of seafood mm. dish or something like that. Um, but like you said, um, you know, going back to the ramen, my brother's actually the one that introduced me to that. I had no yeah. idea. Like, again, I think it's the same thing. You grow up eating a certain type of food yes and um you know my grandmother was the one that always cooked you know growing up Mm -hmm. um and she you know kind of again all the puerto rican foods just in different you know (laughs) variation shapes forms all that different sides but it was kind of the same thing which was great um but again i think as you get older is when you become a little more sometimes adventurous to try new things and other times hesitant Mm -hmm. right so my brother is one that actually introduced uh me i guess to ramen and what that was because he had it a few times there's also something else that you know comes um to mind and it's like bubble tea have you ever had that before yeah yes had no idea what that was had no idea till my brother brought it up Mm -hmm. and um he's you know much more i guess you could say uh adventurous like that to just try new things i can be very routine right (laughs) and kind of eat the same things and be okay with it but recently i want to say um last year was yeah definitely last year i tried two um new things new dishes right Mm. for me that it was a big deal right and the first one um they're both over the summer actually and the first one was sushi i had Mm. never 
uh mm-hmm. really i tried um i think like the most basic sushi what's the most ba- the california, the california roll, roll right yeah, the most yeah, basic yeah. one and didn't really like it was not feeling it and i yeah. think that memory stuck with me um you know all these years and i never really tried it again but in my mind i just knew i don't like sushi right yeah. although i only tried it once yeah, so my yeah. wife loves sushi so i remember one time um you know we went out and she was like let's go for sushi you can try it and she got like again uh, a chicken chicken tempura shrimp tempura mm, she mm-hmm. got uh eel avocado which is like you know that's up there like for like sushi <laughs> people like eel avocado like you ate eel right okay. so um and i tried it and i actually really liked it mm, right okay. so um that was like a game changer for me i was mm. like there dipping it into the different sauces and doing all mm. that really liked it and then the other thing uh, was coconut shrimp really? i don't like seafood period like any Mm. type of seafood i don't like and i've tried things i've tried calamari i've tried salmon i've tried tilapia i've tried all types of fish i've tried lobster Mm. i've like the lobster like main lobster that they were live put in the pot and then like cook like that like that type of lobster and i remember they put it on my plate and i was just like what am i supposed to do with this how do i eat this and (laughs) i just didn't enjoy i didn't like it uh but something about the coconut shrimp Mm. i loved um where now it's almost like every month i think i you know when we go out i I find it's on my plate (laughs) right but again it's just something that it's one of those things where you just have to try it yeah you know and you have to get over kind of your own thoughts about it you have to get over your conclusions about it and get over just the fact that you know in your head it may just be like i've never liked it i've never had that before i've never eaten it you know or as far as i can remember um i've never liked that you know Mm -hmm. because i really do remember one time trying coconut shrimp Mm. and it was my mom had ordered it one time she said try it i remember trying it and just not liking it yeah and then years later Mm -hmm. trying it and loving it yeah I think a lot of it also has to do, especially when it comes, and you can maybe even attribute this to experiences, but when it comes to foods, you know, it's kind of like, it also depends on who made it. Because I remember the first time I had mangu, which is a traditionally Dominican uh, thing to eat. Um, I was like, this doesn't even taste good. Why is this like such a big hype? It was because the person that made it, they didn't know how to make it. It was not good. Then years later, I gave it another try because somebody was like, no, 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 you really got to try it. Salaming. So I think that, you know, when it comes to foods and maybe even experiences as well, you know, sometimes because of a bad experience or because the person didn't know how to make it, you didn't know you thought that's how it always tasted. Um, it kind of like messes it up for you until you give it another try again, uh, which a lot of people don't like to do. It's kind of like one and done. You tried it. It didn't work. Um, but you know, that's why it's, it is important when trying new things, um, even like with experiences, uh, to just go out and do it and then try again. There are times that you kind of like, no, like, nah, I, I did skydiving once and it's kind of like, I didn't like it. I'm not going to try it again. <laughs> right. That's did you actually try? No, I wish. Oh, I was going to say, wish, you've man. never told me that before. <laughs> no, All right. No, so no. skydiving, you no. have not skydived. Okay. Not yet. And not yet. Not wow. yet. And maybe once the kids are over 18, yeah. something like that. Um, but I did want to, I just never got the opportunity to, but one thing that I did try um, over the summer was, I don't know if you've seen this and um, usually it's like in water parks and stuff like that or whatever, like the surfing thing. So it's like, they have the, uh, the the pool thing is set up so that it's like creating waves and stuff like that and then you go with your little boogie board and you try to do the surfing thing uh and that was something that i tried and it was at first i wasn't gonna do it it was like everybody was like oh let's go let's go and i was like yeah yeah yeah. but in my mind i knew i was like i'm not doing it i'm not doing it but you know not to damper uh the spirits of everybody that was hype right. about it i was like yeah, yeah let's go and then i got off the line i remember getting off the line i mean like i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it and then i was like just do it just get up and try it and i think that when it comes to trying new things one of the reasons why people don't do it is because they don't want to feel stupid yeah they don't want to feel stupid or they don't want to look dumb or they don't want the experience of trying something thing and it not being good you know because when you're doing that thing specifically you kind of have to look like a fool yeah. you know it's kind of like you got to throw yourself and maybe the board is going to go flying so then you got to try again and then you got to throw yourself again and then maybe it'll go flying again and then as you've seen people go there's some people that catch it that get it and they can maneuver well and then there's people that don't so you're like oh that's gonna be me rolling around you yeah. know like a marshmallow looking like yeah, a yeah. fool uh but you really have to try it and i'm actually really excited i'm happy that i did try it because at the end of the day i was able to maneuver it well was i the best was i doing backflips on it and stuff like that absolutely not but i did it i did it and it was an experience where i walked away from feeling a little bit more confident i feel like you know what next time we can do it again yeah and again i i like what you said because i think a lot of times people um 
don't try new things because they're busy comparing themselves to other people yeah. who are actually like pretty good at it or have tried oh, yeah. it before. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Cause I, I know like in those uh, situations you're looking at what other people, you know, other people on the surfboard or other people doing yeah. that. And sometimes again, they've done it three, four or five times. Yeah. So they're pros at it and you're there like you're next in line. Like, mm. Oh my goodness, should I do this? Should I not? And I think in trying new things, there needs to be a level of confidence. Mm -hmm. Right. And that confidence can only come mm -hmm. again when you take that first step and take that yeah. risk and actually try it. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? You really don't become confident in something mm -hmm. right off the bat. I think it takes for you to take a step and actually attempt and try yeah. that new thing. And like you said, you may enjoy it. You may mm -hmm. like it. And then you may do it again and then get better and get better. And soon you develop a confidence where not only it helps you in the task that you are doing, but it also helps you in the next time you have to try something new. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? You yeah. have a reference point where it's like the last time I tried something new, it actually went pretty well. I didn't mm -hmm. like it at first. I was scared. I was comparing myself. I didn't know if I could do it the right way, but uh, I did it and it was great. Yeah. And I think it's a really what it does. is It creates a stepping stone for you to continue that habit of trying new things especially if you're someone that's like oh i always like am routine or I, I don't really like to put myself out there um you know once you kind of like get that um that taste of yeah. the adrenaline that comes with it the excitement that comes with it the possibilities and you look at it from a positive point of view any situation may come up again in the future and you'll be more inclined to actually try to do it because you've done it already yeah but if you're one of those people that never takes a, a leap of faith or never takes that one step to try something new then there's so many opportunities and experiences that you just let go by because of that because you're so afraid of looking dumb or feeling whatever because you know that's i think immediately Humanly, that's what comes through our minds, especially for people that are people that don't like to be in the spotlight. You know, you yeah. have people that love the attention, regardless if they look like a fool or not. They love it. They love the attention. They love to make people laugh or they love, you know, to look good in front of people. Then you have other people that they're they loathe it. <laughs> it's like, keep me in the background. Keep me behind the, you know, the curtains and I'll do what I have to do type of a thing. Um, but I think sometimes you do have to get from behind that curtain and you really have to, you know, be the main character in your life, basically. Like, be the person, not in a way that's, you know, pompous or in a way that's coming off being orgulloso. But it's more about the idea of, dude, is my life too? Let me enjoy it. Let me do something that a main character would do in a story, in a chapter of their life. Yeah. It's funny because I'm as you're talking, I'm thinking of um, a trip I took a few summers ago to Maine. Um, it was our uh, first time there. And, you know, it was like a lake house, that yeah. like kind of like lake house living vibe. And they took us out on jet skis, right, uh, cool. to yeah, yeah. Um, a certain rock, mm -hmm. right? And you would like climb up this rock mm. and it was one of those things you'd have to run and jump, jump. Oh, and okay. swing like oh, cool. on something that was hanging from a tree and like then you would land in the water. Mm. Um, it's one thing when you see it, right? <laughs> and you see other people do it and it yeah. looks so easy, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't look that high. And uh -huh. then it's another thing. As you're getting closer and you realize this rock is mad high or this, mm. you know, what I'm doing is so high up and then you start climbing and going up and then you look down and realize, mm. you know, if I slip, what if I fall? And yeah. there, this isn't a water park, right? So like, there's <laughs> nobody there protecting you. There's yeah. nobody there like with guards, uh, you know, like if you fall, it's like padded. Yeah, like this yeah. is like, <laughs> this is full on nature. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but again, I remember going up there and we were with a group of friends, um, and it was very much like some people like were very into it and mm. others were like no nah, i don't think i'm gonna do this i don't think i'm gonna do this and didn't do it mm. you know and then it was like my turn and I, you know that moment where everyone's looking at you like what yeah. are you gonna do yeah. you know what i mean and it's in that moment where sometimes like deep down inside mm. i was like pretty panicked you know mm. mind you Heights don't really bother me or anything like that. It was more of everything else. The yeah. have to run, jump, grab that at the right time, and then let go at the right time because if not, you're going to swing back and oh, hit yeah, yourself yeah. up against the rocks, yeah. you know? So it's all of that that I'm like, I need to practice this somehow. Where can mm -hmm. I practice, you know? Um, so I ended up doing it, and I remember being up there like, oh, my goodness. And sometimes you're actually, you're peer pressured into doing things, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, but. You know, obviously there's, you know, levels of peer pressure. Mm. You know what I mean? So this is one of those moments where I was glad that, you know, there were people that you were like, come on, do you. it, do it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was definitely like a fun experience. It was cool. And nothing happened. It was great. I did it, you know, a few times. Okay, good. You know what I mean? Question. Yeah, it was a very good, uh, a very good experience. But again, mm. it's like I could have left there just you know, thinking, what if I would have done it? Right. True. What if I would have tried? And it's something so small, right. True. And it may seem insignificant. Right. Yeah. Um, 
but again, I think if we're like that with activities, if mm-hmm. we're like that with sports, if we're like mm-hmm. that with food, you know what I mean? I think uh, even when we don't realize it, we begin to bring those habits into other areas of our lives. Oh, yeah, where trying new things or doing something different mm-hmm. becomes a problem or becomes a hurdle we have to cross over, or becomes mm-hmm. such a task, right? where we don't realize it's actually even in the little things Mm. that we are scared to try or scared to do that affects everything else, right? In other areas of our life. Yeah, you know, and it's, listen, I have seen it so many times, people that because a curveball was thrown at them, which is something new, you know, they had a plan on how a certain event was going to go or certain something was going to happen and because something different happened. So it changed the scenario. So now that the scenario is new to them, they quit. They run, they hide, they get upset, they leave it alone, and they're like, you know what, we're not going to do it. And I think that that is a bad habit to have, you know, and it's something as, and then you're like, oh, but how does, what does that have to do with jumping off of a rock? Or what does that have to do with, you know, trying a surfboard? What does that do with having to try ramen? Is that if you begin to cultivate in you a habit of giving up, a habit of you, uh, of not trying things, a habit that anytime anything changes around you that makes a scenario new, it being a bad thing for you and you go into shutdown mode, there isn't, you aren't a allowing room for growth yeah. you aren't allowing room for you to problem solve you aren't allowing room for you to be like you know what i'm gonna overcome this obstacle i'm gonna make it work and i'm gonna figure it out because you're too busy focused on the fact that it's new is different i think it's gonna fail or you allow all these negativity all this negative thought to like really jump into your mind and to shut you down and i think that that's why in your everyday life is important to try the little things, you know, go out and try ramen or go out and try uh, uh, bubble tea or go out and try whatever it is. Maybe you that's, you know, traditionally what you eat. So then go out and try an alcapuria, go to a Spanish <laughs> restaurant and get a bacalaito. I don't know what it is. Right. You know, try something different, um, even in those little things when it's like, oh, just a little snack or maybe um, ch- maybe you always wear dark colors. I love dark colors, mm-hmm. you know, and every once in a while I'm like, you know, what? maybe I got to throw in a little green in there a little something like, a little something you know and, and it's it's different and you may feel a little weird about it but it's cool to try little things because it's really about opening up that door of you being okay with change and i think that that's really what um being okay with new scenarios is about and we see that even in our lives in you know the church for example you know it's kind of like sometimes you have to be okay with changes that are going on or changes that need to happen like maybe you've known for the longest you know what we have to switch up the strategy within our youth or you know what we have to switch up the strategy within our men's ministry but because it's a new thing and it's a change and you don't know how it's going to come out you decide you know what i think it's you know i'm too nervous it's going to look bad or it may not work so forget it i'm not going to do it and it's kind of like no you need to do it you need to try it and in the process of trying it you're going to have fun but you may also have to problem solve and that's okay too yeah and i think also realizing that the same way you feel that there should be a change or that you know you want to try something new how many other people Mm -hmm. are also thinking the same thing waiting for again just that push or waiting for that time or waiting for the moment where they feel confident and it's like you stepping out to try that new thing may Mm. inspire somebody else to join you or may inspire somebody else to say hey i've had that same thought for a long time i have these ideas let me help you out Mm. right and um you know it's funny because as you're talking about trying something new and all of these things i think about um when we first started this podcast and believe it or not um it's we started March 2018. So how many years is that? To four. Four years, four, yeah. right? Four years that we've been podcasting. And I remember back when we had the conversation. So we released our first episode in March of 2018. Yep. Right. But we had the conversation before that. And I'll never forget, we yes. shared it a few times on the podcast. So like yeah. one other time earlier on. Um, do you remember when we had the initial conversation? It was on a beach day. So I know it was in the summer. Right. It was in the summer. Yes. Right. And then um, we had I think we had two conversations because I definitely remember bringing it up at the beach. Yeah. But I don't know if this conversation happened before or after your that conversation you're talking about. But do you remember the day we went to get the suits for my wedding? Yes. And we yes. had it in the car. Yes. So I don't remember if one conversation followed the other. Mm. But definitely we were like we need like a podcast like this was a few years back when podcasts were just starting to like really like become popular and and taking off and we were finding that we were just looking for a podcast very Mm -hmm. similar to what we do here you know what i mean and uh it was different we had never done anything like that before we had never um you know 
I get, like you said, taken certain steps to do this ever. Um, and we took that step to try something yep. new, you know? And I think anytime you try something new, there's a level of excitement. Mm -hmm. There's a level of, oh my goodness, it's going to be great. And yes, we'll do this. We'll do that. I mean, we went in, we started looking mm -hmm. at like, you know, we came up with the logo that, you know, we got, we came up with, okay, what's the name? Mm -hmm. We came up with like, we need to find a little jingle. We yeah. came up with, okay, what are we going to start talking about? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. all of these little things mm -hmm. that we were very excited, you know, to start. But again, like anything, any new thing that you start, you need that preparation, that planning. Yes. You know what I mean? You need to, to kind of have that vision. And I think that a lot of times why people are scared or maybe mm. aren't into trying new things is because they don't really know how they're going to go about it. Yeah. So it's like, I have this idea. I want to start a podcast. I want to start a YouTube channel. I want to start a vlog. I want to do this and the other thing. I just don't know how, mm -hmm. or I don't know where to start, or I don't know how to do it, but I know I want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like starting that new thing the same way when we started this podcast, it was like, okay, we need to start looking at other podcasts. We yeah. need to see, you know, equipment. We need to see how we can start with what we have now and all of those things. You know, it takes, it's a process. Mm -hmm. when you decide to start something new and go forth. Yeah, and I think that along with it being a process, you know, and it goes back to what I was saying, there comes problem solving. Because like you said, you get excited and you're like, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to smash it. We're going to kill it. Oh, man, the, we did three episodes and they didn't record. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which happened. So, yeah, yeah. No, they, we, they got it. It wasn't three episodes. It wasn't three. It was one. <laughs> it was one. But um, our episodes were like over an hour yes. at that time. Yeah. And I remember mm. when that happened. Mm. It was very sad. It was. And we in the same, like we did it that same moment. We did. I think. We and just, we just rehad we had the conversation yes. again. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, and I think that also specifically when you're trying out something new that you're putting together, you have to be okay with it shifting and changing. You know, because if you go back to episode one of season one and compare it to this episode, two completely different people, two completely different setups and styles or whatever. Because in the beginning, you're really trying to like figure it out. Especially yeah. like, you know, for us, we had no idea. We didn't go to podcasting school. We didn't take a seminar online for podcasting or anything like that. You know, so it's really like you're trying to like work your way through the kinks and figure it out what works what doesn't work um and you know that's all part of it as well because if we would have from the first time we did an episode and we had that issue with the whole not it not recording or whatever and be like you know what it's too difficult i'm gonna let it go yeah. i'm not gonna do it no more or even just the scheduling part, you know what I mean? Yes, which they we've were, spoken about that. Which yes. there were seasons where it was like, you know, we were very um, consistent. And then there were others where we had to navigate a lot of like different like life changes yeah, and different things happening, uh, jobs, you yes. know what I mean? And hours and schedules. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because I think now we're at a place where we're very consistent. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not bragging, but last year we released an episode every, every week, week. right? Yep. And, um, you know... I think our lives now are way more busier yes. and way more complex and complicated yes. than they were at that time. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, again, you have to be willing to start because when you start again, all these different problems and things you have to work out begin to happen. You yeah. know what I mean? But then as you problem solve, you start thinking, okay, this is how I can solve this problem. This mm -hmm. is how we can manage scheduling. This is how we can manage, you know, getting topics together, getting guests. And then it's like the next hurdle you face, again, you have reference points, okay? Yeah. You already know what it is to problem solve. You know what it is to try to think of solutions mm -hmm. to, you know, all of these different things that happen. But if you never try mm -hmm. or if you don't take that step, You'll never know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that another thing about when it comes to trying new things is understanding that not everybody may align to your vision. Yeah. So, you know, for example, like we started the podcasting thing and there were people that are like, oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. But that is that the farthest that their support went. Right. There was nothing else that came from them, you know, so it was kind of like, that's so cool. And then that was real far away. Right. And then it's us trying to figure it out. So then you have to realize that when you're trying something new, you may get lucky that you may get a one or two people that are not only supportive of your idea, but are also willing to put in the work with you to make that idea grow. Yeah. But you may be doing it on your own for a little bit and you need to be okay with that. You know, you need to be okay with, you know what? I'm going to put in the blood, sweat and tears. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to work out the kinks and we're going to, you know, really push. I'm going to really push it through because I believe in the idea and I believe in what's trying to, you know, what, what I'm trying to put together basically. Yeah. Um, and eventually 
once you start putting in the work, once you start putting in the dedication, you will get people that will jump in here and there and support and to help and to give, you know, that pick me up when you need it. Yeah. And you have to be willing and accept the fact that you will fail in the process. Oh, yeah. There will be things that will happen that will be, you know, out of your control. There will be things that will happen that won't be right. And even when you're four, five, six, seven years into it, there will always be something that won't go the way you wanted oh, it to yeah. go. And you yes. have to be okay with that. Yeah. Last week's episode, right? <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Last week's episode, those that heard it, go check yeah. it out. It was actually a really good episode, right? Yes. But the audio yes. was not right. No. Right? And it was not right because of a setting on our computer that yeah. we did not, that I, I am the one that does that, right? Did not switch and put on. Yeah. Right. We heard ourselves crystal clear yes. and beautiful through our headphones, <laughs> but it actually Immaculate. recorded. No, right. <laughs> it actually, our beautiful voices, right? Amazing. <laughs> but it actually recorded on our laptop microphone. Yeah. Right? So it sounded crusty. So it was real crusty. Yeah, right. Yeah. I sent it to my brother that he does like vocals and stuff like that. I'm like, listen, can you try to make this sound as best as you can? Yeah. And he really did make it sound much better than what it was. Yeah, and yeah, even yeah. then he was like, there's only so much I can do here. Yeah, you know what I mean? True. Um, but in that moment, it was like, okay, we have a decision. We can just scrap the whole thing, mm -hmm. right? We can, or let just put it out. Yeah. You know, you put it out and it was an honest mistake, yeah. you know, and it was something that, again, you live and learn. Now yeah. it's like, I'm going to double check three, four, five times. Yes. We're going to have a checklist and we're going to make sure, you yeah. know what I mean? Sometimes you will make those mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes you will forget. You will not remember something. You know what I mean? And you have to be okay with that. Because yeah. if you're not okay and willing to make mistakes and willing to try something new and work out all of those issues, you will always stay stuck where you are. Yeah. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable, to get, you know, dirty. You mm -hmm. have to be willing to really focus and 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 problem solve. You have to be willing to not be supported. You have to be willing to, you know, be supported when people feel like supporting you, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many different things that you have to be willing and ready to accept. Mm -hmm. If not, you will stay stuck where you are forever. Yeah, and I think... You know, ultimately, whenever you try anything, you want it to be successful. Yeah. You, if you're trying out a new food, you want it to taste slamming. If you're trying out a new experience, you want it to be an experience that, you know, you want to write a trilogy about. Uh, but I think that at the end of the day, what we're really looking for is to walk away with an experience. Whether it's a good experience or a bad experience, it's still an experience that teaches you something. So it either teaches you, this is what I need to do again, or this is what I need to do different. And then those are the life lessons that we take with us to then apply it into everything else in our lives. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And again, I think, you know, if you are in a place in your life where you're looking for, again, to you try something new or maybe even within your church you mm -hmm. know what i mean um there's always a right way to go about things you know yeah. um if you're talking in a church level church aspect you know what i mean you may not be a leader in your church mm -hmm. you may not have a position in your church but you have great ideas and mm -hmm. you're you think that these great ideas will actually work you know really well you know what i mean don't be afraid to take that step and talk to the people in place whether you know with their leaders your mm -hmm. pastors you know what i mean have that courage to take a step mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To present that idea that's new. And don't be afraid to also say, I want to be the one to push it through. Like, yeah. you know, I'm presenting an idea. And yes, you guys are the leaders and you guys are capable of doing it. But I really feel it in my heart that I need to be the one spearheading this. I need your support. Like, I need you guys there to help me in whatever area it is that I, you know, I can use you for. But in reality... I need to be the head honcho for it. And that sounds crazy and that sounds mm -hmm. weird, but sometimes that is necessary because sometimes God is giving you an inspiration to do something and then you share it with somebody else, hoping that they are going to understand it and do it just as good as you imagine it. And they don't. And the reason that happens is because that inspiration wasn't given to them. That inspiration was given to you. Yeah. So it's for you to execute. Yeah. So when you're put in a position where you're in a church setting or wherever, a work a setting, and you know you have an idea and you clearly see how it needs to be done, how it needs to be executed in order for it to be successful, don't be afraid to voice, I have an idea, and don't be afraid to say, but I need to be the one in charge of doing it. Yeah. You know, and there's a way to do that. Right. You know, don't walk up in there and be like, listen, I run this. Like, right, no, right. that's not what. But again, it yeah. comes back to intention. If your yeah. intention is not that and your mm -hmm. motivation and drive isn't because you want to be in charge and you want to run things or whatever, yeah. that's not how it's going to be perceived. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's fine. If your motivation is pure and mm -hmm. your motivation is, I really want to help, there's a need, and I think I have a solution. And yeah. you go the right way and you speak to the people. And at the same time, you also know 
know how to work alongside people. You know what I mean? If there's certain people already in place or if there's certain things that are already established, you know what? Then you may have to, if your idea is not fitting for that, wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or you may have to work with someone else as mm -hmm. well. You know what I mean? You may have to do certain things if that's what you really feel needs to happen in that moment. Mm -hmm. But if this is an idea that God has given you, if this is an idea that God has put in your heart, he will order everything to happen the way it needs to happen. Yeah. The people that you need to speak to, the events that need to take place, the conversations that need to be had will be had, yeah. you know, but you need to be willing to take that first step. And again, that first step I think is the hardest, you know what I mean? And I think that first step is that step where, you know, it can be hit or miss sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, cause you can try to take that step and it not go how you planned. Mm -hmm. And again, that's all you needed to really bring down your confidence. And yeah. that's all that it took to really bring you down. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be sure of who you are. Mm -hmm. Be confident that this idea is not something that I just came up with randomly yeah. that has no purpose. No, there is a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With what I have in mind. Right. And again, if it's in a church setting, if it's in your job, if it's in your school, if it's in your youth group, if it's in your family, you know what I mean? There are times that, you know, there are individuals that have ideas ideas to you know do things with their family mm -hmm. hey we never have dinner together we should start something where we start having dinner at least once a week together yeah. you know hey we've never gone away like overnight anywhere we should plan and let's go here you mm -hmm. know what i mean hey we've never tried you know um what is it? Hibachi. You know, I mean, I'm trying to think, what is something that, you know, yeah. we've never tried hibachi before. Let's yeah. all go and try that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Our family, like we did that last year. Um, we went to Virginia. We had never done the, why am I missing? Um, Oh my goodness the you're in the trucks in the mud yes what's that called yeah, like the the uh the what? spanish is like los boogies but that's not what it is. it's like the uh <laughs> y'all like know the, what we're talking mud, about in the mud, like yes, the four go, wheelers yes and stuff like yes that. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. all of that about. right yeah wow so <laughs> there i'm sure our listeners are like okay they're yelling like, the answer. yes so that's right there we yeah. had never done that before yeah. and we tried it for the first time and it was messy mm. we got you know dirty and wet it was raining it was like the worst day to do that but the mm. best day at the yeah, same time yeah. and we had a great time mm. you know what i mean but again it sometimes takes for someone to step out with that mm. idea to voice their idea be confident with their idea and be willing to put in the work absolutely and i think that you know what if there's anything you're going to take away from today's episode it's really go out and try that new thing you've been thinking of you know the, the listeners you guys out there you know what i'm talking about whether it's a new food that your friend's been begging you to go out yeah and try with them or it's an experience or something that god has put in your heart to do and you're like oh i don't know i don't want to like rock the boat really take that step and do it yeah Just and if there's someone around you doing something new that yeah. you don't understand mm -hmm. Don't say anything. You know what I mean? Don't bring them down. Don't discourage them. If you don't get it and they're like, you know, why are you on this wave now all of a sudden that you want to do it? Right? Just don't don't destroy other people's fun. You know what I mean? Yes. And don't destroy other people's like attempt to try something new. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And again, if there's something you have to tell somebody and they're your yes, friend in absolutely. honesty and all, of course, you yeah. know what I mean? But for the most part, you know let them try that new thing. They may not be into sports. Let them try it. You yeah. know what I mean? They may not be into, you know, uh, swimming. Let them, you know, uh, jump off that rock and jump into the water. You know what I mean? They may not like snowboarding or skiing mm. or all these things, but they want to try it. Mm. Let them. Yeah. And don't bring them down. You know, the same thing within your church, within mm. your ministry, someone voices an idea. You know, there is even a way uh, wisely to let someone know that an idea may not work. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, you have that idea. It may not work. But what if we tried that this yes. way? Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? There is a way to navigate all of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So let's just kind of be supportive. Mm -hmm. And obviously with discernment, knowing when things are the right time to execute and when it's not the right time and when it's the right way and not the right way. But try that new thing and then support those around you that are doing the new thing. Yeah. And I think it's about being respectful of their process. You know, because, yes, there are times where you do need to be like, hey, did you consider, you know, doing it this way or the, this way or that way? Uh, but there's other times where you really just need to let the person figure it out. Yeah. You know, you know, um, it's all about like I go back to saying like the whole problem solving thing. You you want to be able to build that within yourself to that an obstacle came up or something went left and you being able to bob and weave with it and figure it out. But if you're someone who's always trying to interject yourself and trying to fix it for somebody, you're not allowing them to grow that muscle. So sometimes you got to let 
them work it out. You know, if you really do see something major and you want to give a suggestion, you can. But and the reason why I say that is because I know of people that just because they want to hear their voice, they feel the need to tell you something. But like, oh, why don't you try this? Or why don't you do this? Or whatever. <laughs> and it's kind of like, you're not telling me that because you really think I should do it. It's more because you feel the need to have to tell me something about yeah. it. Because the idea of me doing this on my own makes you feel a certain type of way. And that's for a completely different episode yeah. to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but again, but, it comes down to the discernment. Yes. You know what I mean? When yeah. someone is presenting that new idea, when you have the new idea, when you're yeah. telling somebody your idea, you may tell your friend this new idea that's mm. great that God has given you and they can completely not be feeling it mm. and destroy mm. your whole confidence and, you know, not encourage you in that moment. Yeah. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? That's true. You need to recognize, okay, they didn't, accept the idea they didn't even give me support or encouragement but i know this came from god mm. you know what i mean you have to push forward anyway yeah you know and there's sometimes that people are just using you as a soundboard like you know how many times i've had people come to me and it's just because they had a random idea idea in their head not because they were technically going to execute it it was just they wanted to talk to somebody about it yeah and maybe in my mind i'm like that's crazy but they're so excited about it it's kind of like you know what cool you know pray about it yeah think about it and there are people out. there are people that as they're talking to you about their idea realize oh wait yeah yeah you know actually that wouldn't work because of a b and c yep and then in that moment there's an opportunity mm -hmm. for you if you have, you know, a mm -hmm. way to solve that or if you have an, uh, mm -hmm. a way to kind of like help them in that situation to let them know about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or to simply be like for that individual to know I got to go back and rework this, yep. you know, and that's completely OK. Yeah, absolutely. So this week, I guess our challenge to our <laughs> listeners is to try something new. Yeah, you know what definitely. I mean, take one step towards that new thing. It could be as small as trying ramen <laughs> or, you know, as big as writing a book. Yeah. You know, or putting out music or starting something within your church, Absolutely. you know, starting a new job, hey. you know, if that's something that you feel has been on your heart. Yeah, so we want to thank you guys for tuning in to the latest episode of the Guy Life Culture Podcast. As always, you can catch us on all our social medias. Yeah, so follow us on Facebook and Instagram at God Life Culture Podcast. We want you to subscribe, like, share, comment. If you're watching us on YouTube and seeing the visual, thank you so much for you know supporting and, yes. and showing up every week when we drop our episodes. We're very excited for all of the conversations and all the things that we have coming up in the next few weeks. Yeah, so thank you once again for tuning into the latest episode of the guy life culture podcast that's god, god life culture. culture until next time see ya bye